Hey kids, it's clear. I mostly split this video into two parts because I want to get this game over with faster. This is Demagon. Demagon can breathe fire, which is a pain in the ass. And he can stop you with his claws, and I don't know what else he can do because, like everything else in the game, after you get the brownie ring, he dies really fast. I don't. Hitboxes do not work that way. Oh. I guess you can punch while you're stopped. Well, I just uppercutted a dragon in the face while time had stopped. Because I can do that. Anyway, that sure was a cutscene. Let's keep going. We are now in the Mana Temple. Mana Temple! There's a fish monster. There's a turtle monster. And there's a guy with a level. This sure is a game. This place is full of, like, I don't know, Golden Sun, Golden Sun style elevation or something. Except we can jump in this game, whereas you cannot in Golden Sun. There's nothing else to say about here, it's just more of the same enemies that we really don't care about because we can kill them dead so fast. Seriously, why am I bothering to fight these guys? Oh well. Let's jump over this broken pillar. Well, it'd probably be faster to go up where Hansel is, make him jump down, and then just go th to the next area with him. Because honestly, that's the best use of switching to the other character, is so you can get through to, you know, fast travel. Like, if you need to backtrack, you can always rely on Hansel being way the hell back at the entrance, because his AI is not smart enough to actually follow you. Unless everything is dead, then he will walk through time and space to follow you, and follow you exactly as if you were a Donkey Kong Country character. But until then, basically, this game, this game, this game, this game, I want more tea. I already drank all the tea. It's gone now. I want more. Surrender to me your tea. Also, that guy dropped a treasure chest, but we're not going to get to in time. See, it's blinking, we go over and pick it up, and by the time our punch resolves and we can actually pick it up, it's vanished, because that's how good gameplay works. Not that I actually care what's in the chest, because it's trapped nine times out of ten, or eight, seven times out of eight, or whatever, and the thing we get inside is probably just something dumb for crafting that we're never going to do. But we can petrify people with our punches, so we don't actually have to worry about things being challenging. This is a game. If nothing else, the music here is pretty nice. And the statues are kind of cool, I guess. Oh no, demon heads! Anyway, the fun thing about this path we've gone on, because there's actually a branching path you can take back ways, I just didn't notice it, but if you go into this room, this is a dead end. There's treasure here. I mean, yeah, we need tons more of these pedant stones, but aside from that, there's nothing here. This is a dead end, completely and totally. And it takes me a while to figure that out, because I think there might actually be something back here, but there isn't. We've seen everything there is in this area. We have to backtrack now. <sighs> this sure is a game, guys. Also, somehow Hansel manages to follow us just closely enough to get right next to an enemy and get totally slaughtered by them. See, he's dead now. Good job, Hansel. On the upside, because he is dead, he can travel invincibly through areas. Also, now there are mushroom enemies. Get out of my way. I have an axe. Normally the mushroom enemies do not merit mention, but they are immune to bludgeoning damage. So I could punch it repeatedly until it petrifies randomly, or I could get out the axe. Either way, it's still going to take a while to kill them. And yeah, we gained a level. I don't particularly care. Also, I guess I could revive Hansel, but again, I don't particularly care. Now, 
this point I get kind of indecisive and I think maybe I missed something back earlier. I didn't. We need to go down those stairs and head directly to the right and then we'll go upstairs and we'll be in another place or something. But nope, I think I might have missed something back here because I can't see anything since here that would let me progress into another place. I just let you backtrack far enough to let you get indecisive. I don't think they did it intentionally because I don't think they intended anything about this game to be as it is. But oh man, if you think this is annoying, you need to see the rest of the game. There's this cutscene coming up. I'm not going to talk about it in here because just having to screenshot it was bad enough. But you'll see what I mean. You, you'll see what I mean. go around the guy they put in the middle of the hallway. I don't remember where the entrances and exits are in this place. Yeah, like I said earlier, they only compensate for the, you know, this being the end of the game dungeon by making it big. They don't change it by giving a branching path that's just larger. They still have the dead ends, which are just larger. There's just a lot of filler in here is all. A lot of places where you're just walking through rooms and there's nothing to do. I mean, at this point of the game, because of the brownie ring, nothing poses a threat to us. If we didn't have the brownie ring, things would pose a threat to us, maybe. But even so, we can petrify people with our punches, so... Oh, and also we can just run, if you really want to. That's the thing about this game, is you can run from any fight that's not a boss battle. Granted, if you do so, then even though weapons that the boss will be weak to will still only do one point of damage, so you have to do at least some fights. Yeah, whatever. You spat fire. Good job. You spat Hadoukens. Okay, here we go. Pretty sure we're close to the end of the area here. Where is it? Ooh, it's a treasure. I don't know why I'm excited about this. It's just a wisp icon. Oh good, we can charm enemies now. Because, you know, we don't already have access to light magic. You know, we actually want more partners with stupid AI. Magic Walnut, the only good consumable. Honey Elixir. You remember when Clive said, If you bring me a honey and also some honey onions and also some dice berries for some reason, I'll make a Honey Elixir. What does Honey Elixir do, you might ask? Yeah. That's totally worth doing all that stupid garbage for. Now we have one in the end game. We use that on the final boss fight if we feel like it, but we probably won't. We're probably going to have to use magic on the final boss, because, you know, final, 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 final boss. But, yeah. Also, I think the final boss has, like, three faces or whatever, so... Maybe it'll be challenging by virtue of being all, oh, look at me, I'm floating out of range all the time, so you have to use projectiles to hit me. So you remember the last time that was a boss fight, right? And anyway, we're going back outside again. Don't get too excited though, because I'm pretty sure just up ahead, let's not stay and fight four basilisks at once. Yeah, this right here. This is the last room, and then the, in the, the room after this is the mana goddess statue, and then we go on to the final boss fight of the game, and the final cutscenes of the game, in which the story will come to some kind of a climax, I guess. Oh, and if you're worrying about that stone thing, that's uh, the earth effect of the fossil nux. But anyway, I'm Khalid, this has been Let's Play Sword of Mana. Next time... Oh.